This is Dane Road Station on Manchester's Metro Link, and it's an important station for trams and for people who get on the trams, obviously, but it's not the only Dane Road station in the area. I'm going to show you another one which belongs to my friend Frank. Uh, yeah, it does make you, when you go out on the Metro, it makes you look at their tracks and how they switch and how they, you know, some stations you get off one side, some stations you get off the other side. It's quite interesting. It makes you take a greater interest in in what's actually there and and have huge respect for what they've achieved building that Manchester Metro. It's marvellous. The start of this was finding my son's old push-along Lego train from the 1980s. And then I realised that um, it could be motorised with these power functions, so I motorised it and then found out you could control the power functions with a microprocessor. It's all blossomed from that, really. The first thing to do was to, to, to build the sensors and see if I could detect when a train was in a particular place. So I wrote a program to do that, and I wrote a program to switch an LED light, a red one and a green one. And then once I got being able to switch the lights on and off, and being able to read when the train was on a sensor, I could then, oh, can I do it to change the light when the train goes over the sensor? And then, can I do it to time it so the light goes and then the sensor stops the train if the light's on red and so on. It's just a little bit, little bit at a time. You just build it up, build it up. You're fading the lights on and off on the station. I really like those. It looks really effective. And this is one I've made myself to try and look like the uh, Manchester Metro with Dane Road, our local station on it there. And uh, this is just the best I could manage, really, to the right sort of size. And I've packed people in it because uh, the Manchester Metro is always packed, so you'll see that one's got loads of people in it. And that's the engine. It's got the um, infrared receiver here. The, the way all that works, quite simply, is the Arduino sends um, a code to an LED, which is like you have in your TV remote control. And instead of using the normal remote control that you have for Lego, it's um, the computer sending, uh, basically pressing the remote control for you to do all the control of the trains that you saw. You were a maths teacher, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good thing, but I'm thinking, um, if you'd been an English teacher, and you were doing all this with Lego trains and stuff, you'd probably be giving them names and characters Whereas what you're doing is using your technological skills. So. Yeah, yeah. It, well, the big thing really for me that I found great is that ha having retired, you don't do the brain work that you used to do solving mass questions and being pushed to answer questions in class. But to have to write the code to control all this has been wonderful. Hey, hey. train crash. What, so what are you doing? Try and make it work again. 